Hi, in today's video we're going to talk about transparent data encryption but before that I would just like to say thank you to everybody who has subscribed to the YouTube channel. I just found out that I've crossed 1000 subscribers on YouTube which is kind of a big deal uh, if you've been doing YouTube videos for as long as I have and uh, it kind of lets me know that there are people who are interested in the videos and it also lets me know that I'm doing a good job so uh, thank you for that now uh, in this video we're going to talk about transparent data encryption and uh, transparent data encryption is one of those features where you need to be a little bit careful when you implement it when you think about it basically what happens is uh, when you when you implement security inside of SQL Server there are a couple of different places that you can do it and a well implemented system usually has it done in three different places so the first one is obviously the table level encryption which is uh, using either cell level encryption or using uh, always encrypted in which case you're encrypting a particular column in a table something like email id or social security number the other one is the transfer and data encryption feature which we're going to talk about today in which case we will actually be encrypting the mdf and ldf files in the database uh, a hard disk or uh, the server attached storage now uh, other than that obviously we have backup encryption where we uh, are taking a backup so that could be located anywhere so we want to protect that as well we've already talked about table level encryption uh, and we've talked about backup encryption so today we're going to talk about uh, transfer data encryption now why would you use it now the idea behind transfer data encryption is because if you want to encrypt sensitive information you would typically go ahead and use cell level encryption but the fact is that while there are certain columns definitely that need to be encrypted because of the highly sensitive nature of them such as social security number or uh, phone numbers email ids etc there are a lot of other information inside your database which can be used to get some kind of information out of uh, the database and the best example that i can give you is at one point we were actually considering encrypting a database table and uh, the question came up that should we encrypt the uh, the pin code or should we encrypt the state and the district and the town etc or should we just go ahead and encrypt only the address line one which is the very highly sp specific uh, uh, address information and just mask or uh, not encrypt the remaining more generic information and common sense kind of tells us that you know what the most of the people would be uh, concentrated around cities and things like that so uh, if you just uh, encrypt the first and second address lines that should be anonymous enough however what we found out was that there are certain addresses which are so vast maybe or maybe just unique in the sense that when you look at the zip code you can identify who they are uh, the example that I'm, I was given at that point was the Australian outbacks where the territory is so huge that one address might include many hectares of, of space and that can be easy enough to identify by just looking at the postcode rather than actually having to uh, look at the, um, uh, the address line one address line two another more scarier example that I was given was uh, how you can use the GPS location of the phones to identify the religion of people so the uh, the demonstration that I was given at that time I can't really say who it was but uh, you can actually use a particular time of day to identify if the person is a Christian or a Muslim so uh, what was being done was that if it's a Sunday morning and you see the person uh, at a church you know that that's kind of uh, expected that most likely they are devout uh, Christians and uh, the other example I was given was if at a particular time of day, if you can just check the orientation of the phone, you should be uh, able to get an idea about uh, uh, if the person is a Muslim. And uh, if, there, if the phone doesn't move at the same time that uh, the orientation is facing that direction at that particular time of day, you can actually identify it. And that's stuff that we don't really think about in terms of data that needs to be encrypted. We don't really consider encrypting GPS locations, etc as uh, tr sensitive information that needs to be encrypted but at the same time you can see how if you don't encrypt it it could be misused and that's one of those things that uh, transparent data encryption can help you because while you can still query that information it'll at least make sure that somebody else who's not authorized 
who maybe got access to your MDFLD files because you hosted the data on a third party uh, server, maybe a cloud server or some other hosting service, that they don't get the opportunity to just copy your MDFLD files onto another server, restore it, and then try and query that data off. Uh, typically, all you need to do is if I can get a copy of your MDFLD files, I can restore it on my server and on my machine, I'm the SA. So I'd just be able to start querying the data directly off. Uh, of your database files so uh, those are the kind of stuff that uh, you want to watch out for and the way that you can prevent those things is by impl implementing transparent data encryption uh, as you might know in Azure it's already implemented by default so there are definitely some cases where uh, it's already in play having said that transparent data encryption while it's great for security does come with certain uh, drawbacks as well before I can get into the drawbacks, the obvious biggest advantage is that it's transparent, which means that the end user or the developer doesn't really have to change their code in order to be able to implement transparent data encryption. It is something that they can just select off the table like they normally do, but simultaneously the SQL OS is encrypting the data uh, at the disk level. Also, when compared to other encryption methods such as uh, cell level encryption, transparent data encryption is significantly faster. So it does give you a way to volume protect your data, so to speak. So while you still need to go ahead and encrypt data for specific scenarios like social security number and email, etc., uh, transparent data encryption gives you a much faster alternative to encrypt other less sensitive information that you still want to protect. Now, transparent data encryption uh, is not great for other scenarios. I mean, it's not great for other scenarios in the sense that it does come with certain performance penalties. Uh, the first one being that when you implement transparent data encryption, it takes effect immediately and starts encrypting the data. So you'll see a sudden spike in CPU and memory utilization as the data pages are being read off the data file, put into RAM, encrypted, and then written back. Also, simultaneously, if there are people who are querying that database, any pages that they fetch from the RAM, uh, uh, physical disk into the RAM also gets encrypted. So people who are querying the data while transparent data encryption is going on will see a performance hit. Uh, the other one that's the real problem with transparent data encryption is the fact that transparent data encryption also by default encrypts the temp database. And this is a problem for us because you might have a database server with 100 databases and you implement transparent data encryption on only one of them. And it doesn't really matter if you've just done it on one of them because the temp database gets used by everybody and therefore tempdb will also uh, start showing some amount of performance degradation. The question then becomes why is tempdb being encrypted in the first place? And that's simply because SQL Server uses the tempdb for a number of sensitive information that it needs to fetch. Uh, for example, you might be creating a temp table inside which you've stored credit card numbers uh, while a procedure is executing and the server crashes so that credit card information is now sitting inside the 10 db mdf ldf files and those are the kind of stuff that you want to protect yourself from it's not necessary that i can steal the information only from your uh, database mdf ldf files i can still steal it from other databases as well so these are the kind of stuff that you want to watch out for and transparent data encryption essentially protects you from these scenarios so let's go ahead and look at how to implement transparent data encryption the first thing I want to do is, as you can see here, I've got my master database and like how we did encryption for cell level encryption as well as backup encryption, we use a master key. So you'll see that I've already created the master key over here. So uh, if you want to see how to drop the master key, backup the master key, restore the master key, I've already created the video for that in backup encryption. It's the video just before this. I'll be putting a link uh, on the top right so you can go ahead and look at that as well. Also, I've gone ahead and created a certificate to go ahead and encrypt this data. So you will see that the syntax is basically create certificate, blah, blah, blah. Next, what I'll be doing is I will go into the database that I want to do transparent data encryption on. And it's fairly straightforward. You can see create a database encryption key with an algorithm AES-128. Obviously, you have other more secure ones like 256, etc. The more uh, larger the encryption key, the more time and effort it takes to encrypt. But at the same time, the more secure it is. So I'm going to use a certificate that I've just created to go ahead and create a database encryption key inside of the sec db. And once that's done, as you can see here, all I need to do is I can say that alter the database sec db and start encryption on. 
So when I do this, what you'll see is immediately SQL Server starts to go ahead and encrypt the data. Now you can see that this database contains a fairly small volume of data, so it completed pretty quickly. But if you want to see details about whether encryption is still going on, whether the transform data encryption is going on, you can definitely come over here and look under the column that says encryption state underscore description, where you will find the encryption in progress. You can see that status is running and the percentage is 100. And this feature is something that's new in SQL uh, 2019, where you can pause and resume the uh, uh, encryption, transparent data encryption, so that, like I mentioned before, transparent data encryption doesn't slow down performance while users are actively connected to it. There is another video that I've created about this, so I'll go ahead and put that in the playlist as well. Definitely have a look at that, in which I demonstrate specifically how you can pause and resume transparent data encryption. So as you can see, transparent data encryption definitely is a feature that you want to consider using. In fact, I've had to use it in a couple of different scenarios, especially working with some very secure databases. And as a result, it is something that you want to take into account when you're sizing the database hardware, as well as when you're calculating the performance. Because a lot of the time what happens is people start troubleshooting performance issues without really realizing that some of the impact is because of transparent data encryption. I hope you've uh, enjoyed this video and uh, that's pretty much it as far as transparent data encryption is concerned. Uh, thank you for watching.